What should and what will Israel do in response to Iran's direct attack? Ben Shapiro gives his thoughts. Have a watch and then we'll react. Now, what exactly will Israel do? That's an open question at this point. Yesterday, Israeli government spokesperson Avi Hyman said that Israel will make the decisions necessary to protect the country, which is what you would expect from any sovereign state. Again, if the United States were hit with 300 drones, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles, the country that fired those things at the United States literally would not exist the next day. But if you're Israel, then the United States tells you to, that, that you're being, you guys, you're getting a little bit uppity with your whole self-defense thing. I can't stress um, the nature of the relationship, of, of, of the friendship, of the uh, shared values that we have with the American people and with the administration. And we thank the administration for everything that they've done for us and continue to do for us. Um, but at the same time, we will have to, as a sovereign state, make the decisions to uh, defend our country in the best possible way. Now, in the beginning of the war, we were told, don't rush into Gaza, you know, don't go in hot headed. And we didn't. We waited it out. We went in cool, calm and collected. And we will, we're currently assessing the situation with Iran. Um, and we will act accordingly. So it is still unclear exactly what Israel is going to do. Israel obviously wants to retain the friendship of the United States. They still have to work with Joe Biden and they still have to finish the job in the Gaza Strip. According to the Times of Israel, the war cabinet Monday afternoon wrapped up a discussion on Israel's response to Iran's massive missile and drone barrage amid calls for Jerusalem to exercise caution so as not to spark a regional war. Reports that a retaliatory move could come as soon as Monday. According to Channel 12, which is the biggest news station in Israel, they claim the war cabinet decided to hit back clearly and forcefully against Iran with a response designed to send the message that Israel, quote, will not allow, allow a an act of that magnitude against it to pass without reaction. The response would also be designed to make plain that Israel will not allow the Iranians to establish the equation they have sought to assert in recent days. This was an apparent reference to Iran's warning that future Israeli strikes on Iranian territory will henceforth again be met by Iranian retaliatory strikes on Israel. However, Israel wants to coordinate its actions with the United States. Again, what this means in all likelihood is that Israel is first going to move forward with the finishing of Rafah, which is exactly what needs to happen. The reality is that Israel has plenty of time to strike back against Iran just on a tactical and strategic level. Israel should wait until a more surprising moment to strike back against Iran. The history of Israeli's military action suggests that when Israel launches surprise attacks, as in 56 or 1967, or in Tebi Raid, they're very successful. When they telegraph their punches, as they have been doing for the last 30 years, most of my lifetime, then they are significantly less successful because the world starts to get on their back before the thing is even done. I'm going to stop there, but I think Ben makes really some really important points. Uh, but, and yes, the timing of how Israel will respond is a question, but whether they will respond and whether they should respond is not up for question. And it is really quite straightforward. If you want a world that has zero tolerance for terror and aggression and incitement, you're not going to achieve that by tolerating terror and aggression and incitement. It's that simple. The only way that you defeat this is by answering back. And quite frankly, it seems to me that the onus is to protect, the moral onus on Israel is to protect her people. And if that means that there are casualties on the other side, that's not my fault. Don't start a war with us. Don't, every day for, since Israel's inception, or at least in the case of Iran, since they became the Islamic Republic, don't every day talk about wants to wipe Israel off the map and not expect the state to respond if that's what it seems to be your you're planning on doing, or even in the process of doing. How is it moral for Israel just to sit back and wait and say, well, let, you know, let's see what happens. And no, you get rid of the threat. Don't wait for your people to die. It's so straightforward. And if civilians on their side die, well, they, that's their, that's, that can't be our problem. If you have a state that's trying to annihilate us and that's your clear, explicit objective, then it's quite straightforward. You need to be eliminated. If someone's coming and running to try and kill me, I am going to get them first. That's the moral thing to do. That's the obvious thing to do. It seems to me that we, I don't see why we don't apply the same approach to Hezbollah, to Hamas, and I'm sure Israel will. Because peace also means having peace of mind.
many many Israelis feel on edge the whole time. They're they're they feel. Um, I saw a report recently that obviously, undoubtedly, the mental and physical health and well-being of Israelis post October seventh has declined. It is not acceptable that Israel should be living with such threats. And in the past, she has seen to thwart threats, whether it was bombing the Iraqi nuclear facility, whether it's engaging in previous wars. Even right now, the war in Gaza is absolutely moral and just in terms of getting rid of Hamas and getting rid of the threat. That's the moral thing to do. You protect your people. That's what Israel's always done. We hate the fact that we have to do it. We don't want to see any suffering or any death at all. But if you wish to continue down your hateful, evil rhetoric, then we have no choice. And as Ben points out, Israel has to continue to do what she needs to do to protect her people. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch another one, click here. If you want to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest JTV content, click here. And if you're feeling really keen, you can click the join button down below underneath this video where you can get perks, including early access to new videos and private live discussions with me where we can talk about JTV content and strategy moving forward. And I'll get to hear from you. Thanks again for watching.